Summary of the Conflict Resolution Toolbox Models and Maps for Analyzing, Diagnosing and Resolving Conflict By Gary T. Furlong Modeling Conflict and Conflict Resolution Some conflicts are minor and easy to forget, but many are painful and confusing. Sorting through all the accusations, emotional upset and differing stories sometimes feels impossible. That's where models come in. They can help you organize the details and focus on the essentials. They are like maps. No map corresponds exactly to reality and all maps leave out a lot. However, a good map is useful precisely because it includes only the information you need to find your way. Model number one, the circle of conflict. Some models use images to analyze conflicts. The circle of conflict, for example, pictures conflict as a circle divided into six wedges. 1. Relationships, this covers the party's histories with one another. 2. Externals or moods, these can range from having a lousy day to having a chronic illness or to living in a country with a bad economy. 3. Values, each person has distinct beliefs, ethics and standards of behavior. 4. Data, each person knows and assumes different information. 5. Structure, beneath many conflicts lie structural problems such as limited resources, authority problems, and organizational structures. 6. Interests, this includes what each party wants. The first five wedges are drivers, they cause conflicts. As mediator, you can't do much about people's past relationships, personal problems, or beliefs. In fact, focusing on these wedges may only escalate the battle. Instead, the best strategy is to focus on data and structure. To analyze data problems, have the parties meet to share information. Explain, challenge and correct erroneous data. Interpret the information together and develop a list of facts on which everyone agrees. To analyze structural problems, ask the parties to identify common issues and to brainstorm together about solutions. They may need to reorder their priorities or reallocate resources. Model number two, the triangle of satisfaction. This model focuses on interests. Parties to conflicts want not only different things, but also different kinds of things. Each type of interest requires a different resolution strategy. One, result, this is the most tangible part of a conflict, such as a salary demand or a request for a repair in a rental apartment. Negotiate these interests using approaches ranging from compromise to brainstorming solutions together. 2. Process, these interests do not involve the content of the conflict but rather the negotiation process itself. They include such issues as whether the decision-making process is inclusive and transparent. You can't usually solve process interests. Rather, monitor them throughout the negotiation and make procedural changes if necessary. 3. Emotion, you can never solve these interests, since they involve people's emotions, which are non-negotiable. Nevertheless, you must acknowledge and make room for interests such saving face, feeling hurt or having an emotional attachment to the subject of the conflict. After you've categorized the party's interests, you can shift from one type of interest to another when negotiations get stuck. Addressing one type of interest may yield benefits in another if for example, a shift in process may make all parties feel heard and provide emotional benefits. Follow these steps. List all the interests of all the parties. Identify the interests everyone shares, such as an equitable, friendly and peaceful. Work environment. Offer solutions that meet the most interests. Trade low-priority interests for more important ones. Model number three, the boundary model. Boundaries can be physical, behavioral or social. They share for characteristics. 1. They define standards of behavior. EA Highway Speed Limit establishes a behavior to which all drivers must conform. 2. They have legitimacy. EA Government Agency establishes the speed limit. 3. They are enforceable. If you drive over the speed limit, a police officer will give you an expensive ticket. 4. They are usually flexible, the posted speed limit on a highway may be 65 miles per hour, but in practice the speed limit is closer to 70. This degree of flexibility is called the norm. 
In other words, the boundary is 65 miles per hour, while the norm is 70. Conflicts occur when people violate boundaries and norms, and authorities attempt to enforce them. Both elements, violation and enforcement, must be present to cause a conflict. Without enforcement, the boundary simply ceases to exist. Enforcement, in contrast, causes a crisis. To resolve boundary conflicts, re-establish or redefine the boundary and the enforcing authority. Tighten norms, at least temporarily. For types of problems cause almost all boundary conflicts. 1. Lack of clarity around what the boundary is, a new employee doesn't know how long a break he or she may take. 2. Lack of acceptance of who has authority to enforce the boundary, a colleague reprimands a new employee for taking too long a break. The employee says, it's not your job to be watching my breaks. 3. Lack of acceptance of who has jurisdiction over a boundary, an industry sets a standard for emissions but one company refuses to comply, saying that no law requires it to adhere to the standard. 4. A deliberate expansion of a boundary past acceptable norms, an employee arrives 5 minutes, then 10, then 45 minutes late. Others follow this example. The boss sends the staff a memo requiring them to report to work on time. Everyone ignores it. Crisis. Model number 4, Interests, Rights, and Power. Interests, rights and power is a model not of conflicts themselves, but of conflict resolution processes, which the model categorizes into three types. Interest-based processes, these focus on the needs and wants of the parties and attempt to reconcile them. They're collaborative and emphasize building relationships and compromising. However, they take a lot of time and the attempt to reach a mutually agreeable solution may fail. The outcome of these processes is win-win. Rights-based processes, these focus on the party's rights as spelled out in laws, contracts and other documents. They apply the same standards to everyone and people see the results as fair. These processes are quicker than interest-based processes, but they are less flexible and the parties may never heal their relationships, sowing the seeds for future conflicts. Thus, the outcomes are win or lose. Power-based processes, these processes are adversarial, using approaches such as threats, violence, voting, and strikes. They are quick and dirty. The parties with the most power get what they want. The others see the results as unfair, which may lead to resistance and the need to use more power. Thus, the outcomes are lose or lose. Think of the interests, rights, and power model as a stairway, with interest-based processes on the bottom and power-based processes on the top. With each step, conflict resolution costs more in not necessarily in money but in relationships, morale and reputations. In addition, the further up the stairway you move, the less control you have. In interest-based negotiations, you can use persuasion or generate new ideas. In rights-based processes, rules, or even judges or mediators, determine the outcome. In power-based processes, emotional or literal violence takes over. Therefore, use interest-based processes first and loop back to them whenever possible. Model number 5, the dynamics of trust. Trust means having positive expectations about another's motives and intentions in the face of potential risk. When people are hurt or in conflict, they don't trust one another, yet trust is necessary for conflict resolution. When something bad happens, people look for a cause. They tend to interpret others' motivations in ways that reinforce their self-respect and worldview, along a continuum from blaming the situation to blaming others. Situation, the circumstances were beyond your control, you didn't receive enough training, you did your best, your action doesn't represent your true character. Intrinsic nature, others unintentionally caused the problem, they had good motivations, they didn't realize they would hurt you. Hostile intent, others caused the problem, maliciously and deliberately, they meant to hurt you, they are innately unethical, they did it to advance themselves. To resolve a conflict in which trust has broken down, introduce new information that shifts the attributions to the positive end of the spectrum e in other words, toward the situation. Demonstrate that the process is fair. Encourage confidence-building measures, non-risky actions that demonstrate the goodwill and trustworthiness of the parties. Model number 6, The Dimensions of Conflict. 
People come into conflict over the way they think, feel and act. Each dimension responds to these different techniques. Address clashes about ideas by introducing new data, reinterpreting existing data or reframing the information. Address emotional clashes by acknowledging the validity of the party's feelings and creating a safe place where they can vent. Address clashes over behavior by identifying the trigger actions that created the conflict, developing ground rules for interactions or helping the parties change. Model number seven, the social style model. Different social or communication styles cause interpersonal problems, especially because these styles are deeply rooted in personality and culture. Communication styles have two dimensions. 1. Assertiveness, ask assertive, people are indirect about getting what they want, and speak slowly and softly, while, tell assertive, people directly insist on getting their way, and speak loudly and forcefully. 2. Responsiveness, control responsive, people have a limited vocal range, and use few facial expressions or gestures. Emote responsive, people have a broad vocal range, use many gestures and have animated facial features. Ask assertives or control responsives may feel bullied by telassertives or emote responsives, conversely, telassertives or emote responsives may feel their counterparts are holding things back or even deceiving them. Translation and adaptation are the solutions to these style conflicts. If you are in conflict with someone who communicates in a different style, try changing your style. To help others negotiate such conflicts, show the parties how they can adapt. Model number 8, moving beyond the conflict. Conflict hurts, and people respond to pain in three stages. 1. Denial, in this stage, people deny they have a problem. They try to maintain the status quo. They aren't ready to negotiate, and if they make an offer they do it only to show how reasonable they are, and that others are to blame. 2. Anger, when people finally admit they have a problem, they may explode with emotion. They are no longer in denial, but they aren't ready to deal with the problem. 3. Acceptance, now the negotiator has something to work with. Identify which stage each party has reached. Move those who are in denial or angry through these early stages. To break down denial, ask open-ended questions to help them explore their counterparts' realities and the larger situation. When people are angry, acknowledge the validity of their feelings. Finally, when all parties have reached acceptance, mediation can begin.